well, the very controversial Neji. <laughs> so tell me, first of all, how, how did you how did you come across this this content of mine online in the first place, and what was YouTube. it that you found to be controversial? Uh, well, YouTube Shorts introduced me uh, you to me. To be honest, mm -hmm. I really appreciate the fact that you empower men, but okay. there is something about women as well that okay. needs to be discussed. I think. Hit me. Let's go. Okay. Cool. Um, well, first of all, I'm not, I'm really, really uh, with you in what you say in regards to men empowering them and everything. But for example, why would you uh, refer to women as being subordinate to men rather than being um, a, like in, a, in an alliance, for example? Two team players, like they ally, two team players ally for uh, a certain uh, outcome rather than being a subordinate. Where do, like you, a, where, where do you work, Yusuf? Mm -hmm. You don't need to say where. Do, do you work a job? Yes. Okay. I'm assuming you have a boss, a manager. Yes, sure. Does the manager of your particular job, does he own the company or does someone else own the company? No, someone else owns the company. Okay. So this individual who owns the company, okay, yeah. are you in an alliance with him or do you work for him? No, I work for the person who owns the company, but marriage isn't this way, right? Hold on, I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> so the person who owns your, owns your company, he's not mean to you. He pays you on time. Does he pay you on time? Yes. Okay. And is, would you say it's a fair wage? I'm sure you, you would like to earn more money and he could pay you more and inflation and cost of living. But yeah. for the most part, would you say that he pays a fair wage? Well, let's say yes. Okay. For the sake. Okay, good. Does he oppress you in any way? Or, you know, I don't know. Does he tie you up in chains? And or does he make <laughs> you do crazy overtime when he doesn't pay you? No. Okay. So in this example here, he is not your business partner. He is not your partner in any way, shape, or form. And it's definitely not an equal relationship. Yes. But he doesn't oppress you. He takes care of you. And that's because, precisely because you are his subordinate woman, it's because of that that he takes care of you. And he makes sure that he pays you on time. And he offers you certain perks. And I don't know, maybe you get sick leave, maybe you get some type of uh, company lunches or something like that. That's his job. That's his responsibility. Precisely because you are his subordinate. But in a working environment um, place, in a marriage, I think it's different. Yes, Both but sister, uh, I'm sorry, this is where we disagree now. <laughs> You are working for your husband. What are you talking about? You are working work for him. <laughs> I'd rather say with working together, a woman provides like the emotional well-being for the man. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of an alliance between two, the two of them. That's fine. I can accept that in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. You're still a subordinate though. No, it's not. It's for subordinate. <laughs> okay, let me ask you a question. Yes. In this alliance, okay, who's the final decision maker? If I, you will say a man, but if I say that the woman influenced the man most than he can think he's doing. I don't disagree with that. There's a lot of the, many empires have fallen because of this. The influence of a woman can be extremely powerful. I don't disagree with that at all. However, in the alliance that you have with your boss, who, would you, who has the final call then? The, the brother, the, the gentleman who owns your company. The boss. He has the final call. Now, could a woman influence him? Um, you know what? I bet, yeah, nine times out of ten, you put a beautiful woman on the scene and she will insinuate herself into his soul, just like Cleopatra did with uh, Julius Caesar and uh, Mark Antony. He had the biggest superpowers of the world ruling the Roman Empire and still she had her wicked way with them. I'm sure she'll be able to figure it out. But, generally speaking, it's him who has the last say. Let me give you another example, Yusra, yeah? We're driving a car, okay? Yeah. How many steering wheels does a car have? 
four. Uh, steering wheels. Steering. How many steering wheels? Uh, the one, yeah, yeah. Okay, so a steering wheel, ha a, a, a car has one steering yeah. wheel. What would happen if a car had two steering wheels? <laughs> no, it will deviate. It will deviate, it will crash. Why? Because if I decide that we're going to go left and you decide that you want to go right, we're going to have a crash in the middle of the M1. Yeah? Yeah. This is what happens in a marriage when both parties believe that they are equal to each other. The man wants to go left, the woman wants to go right, and they have a car crash, and we call that car crash divorce. If you say so. However, I still insist that... First, that what do you mean if you say so? <laughs> if you disagree, tell me why you disagree. Yes, I do disagree. I, I agree that the man makes decisions, but I'm, I truly believe that the woman has a very strong uh, power over the dynamic as well as it should be out of, um, each one has a role, to be honest. The, the man has a role. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. This is a very fluffy answer. I need detail. What okay. is this fluff? <laughs> I just gave you an excellent example, okay? And you agreed that if, if we're going to have two steering wheels, we are going to crash the car. Okay. So what's the difference between that and a marriage? Well, the way you picture it out, if you want me to take, again, the working or the job, uh, example you give me is as if you say there is a operational manager and a marketing manager this mm -hmm. is how i see things to be honest like the man yes he can have the final uh decision or mm -hmm. the word of where the re relationship is heading however the woman has her own things as well that are important in the relationship Absolutely. so a partnership uh, it should be based out of uh, principles, values, love, and everything, not who has the more power. in the Yes, uh, no, no, I, I agree 100%. It is based upon principles and values and love. And the principle I love the most is, it's my way or the highway. <laughs> it's my way or the front door. This is very important principle, sister. On a serious note, <clears throat> there are details that women see that men just don't see there are details that my wives point out to me that I completely miss and overlook and if you think about it this makes sense men tend to, have to look at the bigger picture how does this influence the bigger picture women even in argumentation pick at the details but those details can be very important and I have benefited myself many times from my wife's pointing out details that I simply would not have seen. That feminine eye is very useful. Just as you right now are very useful to the owner of your company. Could the owner of your company, could he do all of the jobs that are required in the company himself? No. Could he do all of them? Absolutely. No. no. Which, means, which means that he needs you. He needs you you or someone like you to operate the business otherwise he doesn't have a business otherwise he's a glorified self-employed person is what he is right so don't get it twisted this is not to demean or to or to demote the importance of the role of a woman no it's not to do that at all because just in this example that i gave you in the workplace if your boss didn't have you or someone like you he'd have to do the job himself or he'd have to shut up shop. The business would fall apart. Same with a ma in a marriage as well. This discussion has sometimes gone about do men need women? Let me tell you something. Yeah. Put aside the fact that we need each other to continue the human species. Let's just imagine, can a man live towards the end of his life without a woman? Yes, he could. He could live towards the end of his life without a woman, but it'd be a miserable existence. You wouldn't be very happy because life is so much better with a woman in your life. And the only thing better than having a woman in your life is having two women in your life. And you know... <laughs> this is not very hard to manage. Like one woman is very hard to manage in nowadays. Let's talk about polygyny. How do you view this? How, because listen, I- Listen, 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 listen. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever people say this to me, that marriage is hard. I have experienced hard marriages, don't get me wrong. 
but I have also experienced the good marriages. And what I have realized is that whenever people say that marriage is hard, they're in a bad marriage. They're in a bad marriage, bruv. I'm not telling you to get out of the marriage. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm simply saying marriage is not meant to be hard. Marriage is meant to be this. I have a hard day at work, okay? You have a hard day in the office. I have a hard day with whoever. And then I come home and I look forward to seeing my woman or women. And that's where I get my peace. Just as Allah says in the Quran, women, uh, you, you hear me quoting this a lot, this ayah, and from his signs is that he's created from you wives so, so that you may find peace within her. And he's placed between you love and mercy. So when people say to me, marriage is hard, it's really difficult, bro, you're in the wrong marriage, mate. It shouldn't be hard. It should be a pleasure. It should be life is hard. And then I come home to peace and quiet at home. And if you don't have that, then yeah, marriage is hard. Yeah, but this is in like, let me speak about marriages, like one man married to one woman, a woman. But I, how doesn't it? create a kind of uh, competitiveness between women and for you more headed to be in the middle of, of course it creates competitiveness it's great look <laughs> again okay your boss he owns your company if tomorrow your boss hires another individual who does the exact same job as you are you going to feel under pressure or a little bit of pressure to perform better? Because there is only, um, no, let me give more context. Your job, there is only one position for it. Okay. In your, in this example here, but your boss decides to hire another person to do the exact same job as you. The reason being is he wants to pick the best one. Are you going to feel under more pressure to perform or not? Yes, well, because you give it, you are giving me a circumstance of a job, of course, because you are rewarded in this. Yes, and my <laughs> wives are employed. They have job. Their job is to blaze me. What is problem? I don't understand. <laughs> there is no problem. <laughs> and this is what I'm saying. It's, we call this competition anxiety. It's good. It's not a bad thing. Now, can it get out of hand? Yes jealousy you can come in and this is why there needs to be a healthy distance between the wires and actually this is a good point you guys have seen me you know I posted a couple of things online you know I mentioned in the past that I go out with my wires we have dinner together we go out together and all of that and we do however we also have healthy distance familiarity breeds contempt if they start to get you know to spend too much time with each other and they or they, look, they find out too many things about each other, they're going to get jealous, they're going to get upset. So healthy distance is necessary, but handled correctly and managed well, it can be done. But to answer your question, yes, competition anxiety, absolutely. They're competing for the king, me. If you say so. So according to you, what are the duties that you should bring to the table as a, as like, a good what are the, the what are the what? what what are the qualities you bring to the table as a good husband like to be reward to to have a uh, multiple wives for example it sounds like you're saying that someone has to earn it is that what you're saying that a man has to but earn it you're speaking to like the youth how would you describe uh someone who's been able to handle multiple wives, how we should be, for example. I will answer this question by asking you. First of all, how old are you again? I'm 26. You're 26. Are you married? No. So what would it take for you to feel comfortable with your husband taking another wife? Or would you feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. That's a difficult question for me because I this is none of my intentions. Okay, but hold on. You yeah. didn't say no. You didn't say no. What you said was, it's not my intention. It's a difficult question. So what I understand from that is, under the right circumstance, you would consider it. This is a very, very um, little, little, little percentage. Okay. 
but that that little percentage still exists because I can tell you something. I would never consider my wife taking another husband at the same time as me. That's never going to happen. It's not even a little percentage. But for you, there is a little percentage that you would consider sharing your husband. So please, Yusra, enlighten us. What would that circumstance be? Well, but I would like to hear it from you first. Then I'll explain this to the audience. This is how I'm answering it. I'm going to answer it by through a conversation as opposed to me just having a monologue. What would it take for you to accept your husband marrying again? And by the way, not like you have a, cho a choice, either, by the way, but yeah, let's just pretend you have a choice. Yeah. Your husband, he says to you, Yusra, I'm considering getting married again. What would it take for you to accept this? For, that's, that's tough for me to answer, to be fair. Okay, let me be clear about this. For me, absolutely no. However, however, if my husband... You can't, back, you can't backpedal now. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not backing up. Because I'm still not, I still don't know who am I speaking about. Like, it's a question mark for me. But if the person is a really, really high status man that, uh, and we have a very deep, yes, and we have a very deep relationship that I cannot really, really, like, let go of him. Okay. This, okay. In this case, I can say, well, yes, if there is absolutely no other solution. But the connection first has to be very, very deep. Like, What if you have a very, very deep connection with someone, yes. but he, uh, he earns £20,000 a year, and he's fat, and he's short, and he's bold, and he's a brokey. But you've got a very, very deep connection. I won't have a deep connection. Oh, so the connection is is tied no. to his bank no. account and his uh, marathon and uh, well, because huh? of some standards that make a man stand out of the crowd in front of me before having any potential connection i don't see that i'm like uh that i can judge people out of appearances or blah blah, blah but i have some things that i can see in a man from afar that will draw me to this person first tell and us, what is that I want to know from you, yes. what would it take for a man, okay, mm -hmm. to attract you to the point where you, Yusra, would consider being his second wife? Second? Yes. Because I, I won't speak about being a second wife, because being a second wife always have some bad insinuation that stole someone from okay. already existing. Okay. Let's change the terms. Co-wife. Oh. Forget one, two, three, second, third, fourth. Let's change the terms. What would it take for you to consider being a co-wife to another to another man? As I said, if I'm the number one, then maybe I have a conversation about a second. But okay, so you're telling me then that you would never consider being a second, third, or no. fourth wife to a man. So I'm gonna be regardless of who he is, even if he's Habib Nomagomedo. Yes. If, even if he's Habib. What's your favorite Moroccan footballer? <laughs> What's your favorite Moroccan footballer? Uh, I, I don't know. Can you change the, the profession? All, all I'm saying is we have established here that there is a time and a place where even you would consider being a co-wife. No. Even if it means that you are the first one, let's say you're the first one, there is a situation where you would tolerate and accept it. Yes. So that's it. So you don't even need me to answer the question because you already know from yourself that there is a situation, there is a circumstance, there is a type, an archetype, a type of individual, a brother, that you would accept this for. So what's the problem? But not a type. It depends, as I told you, what the connection with this individual you know what i mean yes the 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 the, the bible they say connection but then when the the bank account is broken the connection is broken for some reason i no. don't know very strange when he's uh 4 foot 11 the, the connection is broken as well and when let me, fat, the connection is broken let, let me tell you something you know for first of all for a man the financial situation has it's 
not about the money itself. It's about his ability to create money. Because when someone, no, no, for real. Because when someone. That's like saying, that's like, that's like saying. It's not about owning Armani clothes. It's about having a car to get me to the Armani store. It's the no. same thing. You want the money at the end of the day. There's no difference. No, let me finish. Let me, let me finish. Which I don't point. have an issue with, by the way, but go on. But if you really see what I'm trying to say. Because when you see, there is a proof. As you were giving um, the example of yourself, for example, when you trained, training means the same thing. This is mm -hmm. the proof of how disciplined you are. The same mm. as where you see that, you, for example, a man has financial ability. It's the proof of his mindset, how his mind is wired. Oh, uh, not necessarily. No, no, not necessarily. A lot of people fell onto a lot of money over the, uh, the COVID period just by going on a punt with some random crypto. But generally speaking, yes, I would agree with you. Generally speaking, I would agree with you there. Your body, however, is something that is very much within you. Unless you're a genetic freak, if somebody is in good shape, this, you know, they have to really work for that. I have a question for you. Yes. I want you to, I, to tell me what, type, what does a man have to have? Because there's 127 people in here right now. Hun half of them, more than half of them are going to be men. And a, a, a good number of them may well be interested in pursuing a conversation with you for the purpose of marriage, okay? What would a man have to bring to the table for Yusra to consider marrying him? Well, And don't tell me about the connection, the internet connection, nobody cares. Uh, we need objective detail, yani. Tell us about what he looks like. Tell us about his, uh, his earnings, how much does he have to earn, and so on. Well, I will not give uh, a number about earnings. This is not what I'm looking for. However, for me, a high-value man is someone charismatic. So he has to be a high-value man? Sorry? Does he have to be a high-value man? Yes, but I'll, let me go Okay, through. but high-value man is, is dictated by a number. He no. He has to earn a particular number if we're talking about the type of high-value man that you're, you're referring no, to. No, 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 no. I'm going through the details. A high-value man, which means for me, a charismatic person, family-oriented person, a well-spoken person, an emotionally available person. Oh, and also give for me a strength for flip's sake. You're going to make me swear, woman. Go on. <laughs> go on. That's it. That's it for me. Okay. Okay. So let's go for it one more time. He has to be emotionally available. Yes. Family. What else? Family oriented. Family oriented. Number three? Charismatic. Charismatic. At it. And, and number four? Well spoken. Well spoken. And okay. I have five things. And what? Prov what was the last one? Provide. Yes. Okay. I'm going to bring you this guy. <laughs> all right? He's well spoken. He's charismatic. He loves his mother. He do all of these things. Okay? But he looks like this. All right? This is what he looks like. And he, he earns £25,000 a year. You marrying him? Charismatic. I um, mean, it's, it's a whole bunch of things together. Oh, uh, what is it then? Go on, he looks like this and he earns 25 grand a year. You marrying him? <laughs> okay. So we've established then that he needs to look a particular way and he needs to earn how much? How much does he need to earn? No. I told you, there is not a number of how much he's earning. Of course there's a number. No. I'll prove to you how there's a number. Because when I said to you £25,000, you said no. Well, but, which course, means there is a number, woman. Not even the expense of, I don't know, 25k is nothing. You cannot live with this amount in this country. I agree. So there's a number. No, but this, this is not a number. There, there is a... I don't know how to say it. Hamzan Shimayev. Let's speak, bro. <laughs> okay, say that again. I said, Al-Aish Al-Kareem. There is Aish a minute. Kareem. Uh, 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 what, what's Al-Aish Al-Kareem? What does this mean? There is a minimum mm -hmm. uh, that you should have in order to pursue a healthy yes, life. Yes, and I agree with you completely. So what is Yusra's minimum for her to consider marrying a brother? Because 25,000, as we have established, is too low. So for the Aish Al-Kareem, 
Okay, very good. How much does he have to earn minimum for you to consider him as a legitimate prospect? No. Actually, no. Can you head that no, way? Let's I, go this way. I don't have, I told you, I don't really have a number. This is one, this is considerable as you every other. You do have a number because you said no to 25. Okay, I'm going to go up. Yalla, I'm going to go up. 30,000. Is this enough? I won't, I won't give you like a strict answer about it's it. It's not enough. 35,000. Is it enough? I'm not, I'm not giving you like, I told it's you. It's not enough. 40,000. Is it enough? <laughs> well, you say, you answer. I'm not answering right now. Okay, 45,000. He earns 45, that's above average, by the way. 45,000, the average is 36 something. He earns 45,000 pound a year. Would you consider him? I would consider him if it's with the other things I mentioned. Okay, fine. <laughs> no, that's reasonable. Why didn't you just say that, woman? The Pinel could have saved us like the past 10 minutes. Because it's not too unreasonable. <laughs> so I have another question for you then. <clears throat> You're 26 years old. Yeah, I need the, the clock is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock. I am pretty certain, okay, is you're a reasonably attractive woman. I am pretty certain you have had brothers come your way and offer to marry you or, you know, to ask for your hand in marriage. And yet, you're 26 years old, which is like right on the border, and you're not married. Tell me what caused you to reject them or turn them away. Wow. Well. Um, this is I, my mindset. I'll say this straight away. Mm -hmm. Go on. This is the reason. Because there, I can spot things and red flags out of a lot of people, so I keep uh, filtering. Give me an example of a red flag. Well, this the mindset first. For me, if it doesn't click with the right mindset, mm. I'm not even given a chance for, 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 I don't know, for an encounter, maybe. So, in, hold on. One moment. In all of this time, there has not been one brother who didn't click with his mindset? Not one? No. <laughs> not one? And I, no. And I can say this, obviously, in front of everyone and repeat it again and again. No. Nope. Mm. From the, how I view the world, no. And this is for me the most uh, valuable thing ever. Because if I'm arguing with someone over my views or something, it's not even going to a further stage, not even like getting married. So if a man was to ask you, Yusra, I, I like you, I would like to know, what was it about these other men that their mindset didn't click with you? Can you, let, can you tell me so that I can see if I have this or I don't have it? What is it? Define it. What is it that didn't click for you? Okay. I have to think about it, like the example. Yeah, Mara, it's Miami. If you don't know the answer, I know. how the hell is next man, average Abdullah, meant to know? How? Blay, tell me. But how, you don't know. No. How's he meant to know? I know, but. But this is a way I'm find, trying to find my words in order to present it on to the people in a way they can understand. Forget the, forget the comments, forget the people. This is a conversation between me, me and you right now. Pretend we're having a private conversation, okay? <laughs> so what was it that if, if you, you can't articulate with words quickly, right off the cuff, what it was that didn't, you didn't find appealing and interesting about those brothers, how is another brother meant to stand the chance? How is he meant to stand the chance with you? Okay. I have a vision of the world and I am very ambitious. And I, I have, have a to dream. be not a dream. Like Martin Luther King out here. A vision with goals. And I need a person that is on the same wavelength as me. Uh -huh. so okay, you have a vision. Okay, this is good. I like this. So if you were the boss of a company and you have a vision, you're part of your job is to articulate this vision to the employees, to the subordinates, your favorite word, okay? <laughs> That's your job. I would like you, Yusra, please, to articulate your vision. What's your vision for marriage and, and, and what you expect from being married? What's your vision? Paint it for me. Inspire me. Inspire us. I want to be inspired. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to explain it to you in a very subtle way. For me, marriage is two individuals who have... There are things in common, 
that enter an alliance in order to create life and to make the earth together. Each of them has his own duties, which are completely different, but they complement each other. However, if they're not aligned on the same wavelength, it's not going to get anywhere and the problem going to arise. The okay. same wavelength. Good. What's the wavelength? Okay. Same so, and I, I want you to imagine that I'm a guy, I'm a, one of the brothers in the, in the stream right now, and he wants to know what's the wavelength before he shoots you a DM and he shoots his shot. What, what's, paint, paint the picture. Andy, this is your moment. Tell us, what is it? The picture. Oh, that—that's that's hard. That, that's hard to be answered in a very clear way. It's not really, to be honest. It's only hard if you don't know the answer to the question in the first place. Then it's hard. No, I know the answer. Okay, I just... great. You know the answer. Please tell us the answer. Please just sort of tell us the answer. Well, to the guy in the stream to the in the chat right now yeah i just want you to see this as an this is an excellent example by the way of why we take what women say with a pinch of salt like you know i love women you know i really i love women but i take what they say with a pinch of salt shut your mouth be quiet come here come here sure stop talking yes that's okay fine because they don't know bro it's like big children you can see this for yourself firsthand you know i'm right me speaking in front of a hundred person that's not making me that much so ease. what does a brother have to do for you to consider him Yell, tell us we would like to know what does he have to bring to the table he is considering dming you he is considering shooting his shot with you what does he have to do to bring to the table well, what does he have to do to impress you i told you i'm impressed by minds first pardon I'm impressed by minds first. Okay, so tell me what that means then. What, like, what's an impressive mind? An impressive mind is someone that has a strong mindset, that has things wired in his brain, a vision. You, you were like triggering me to say what the vision. For example, um, let me see. Let me try to pick something first. I can see this through details. I'm someone who is leaning toward accomplishing that. So I cannot see this. A man, a man who can accomplish, a man who is thriving for success, who has a drive, who is uh, disciplined. There are a list for me so I can consider a man. I'm not speaking about the end result because I'm very much interested in a very like, uh, yeah, final product that type of thing. But I can see things in the way a man behaves, a man speaks, that are inspiring for me and I have a vision that this person will thrive afterwards and I might be on the same wavelength as you, as you said with this person. So this is exactly what a man needs to bring to the table for me. I see like there is a basis, there is something going on in the I go I under, I understand what you're saying. What you're saying is that you you want you want a top ten you want a top ten percent man. Let's just stop beating around the bush. You don't want the average Abdullah that you hear me talk about online. Zahla You want average Abdullah? No, because I'm not average. Not the in the in the in the the point. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Careful, yeah. Be careful where we go now. No. So you don't want average Abdullah. So that means then that you're not basic Bushra. No. Okay. I would like you please to tell me what makes you so so sure that you are not basic Bushra. Of course, because I have put so much work in myself that's not making basic Bushra. Okay, what work are we talking about here? Work on all levels. Like, so, I'm not... So, the, so there's many levels then, right? Yes. So give me a five. Right, if there's many levels, you can name me five quickly. Okay, intellectually, I've studied so much in my life. Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, uh, psychologically, I'm doing so much inner work with myself. So if I'm with someone, I'm avoiding all the drama. Like I've healed so much that I'm not causing those like... Healed? So there's been damage? No, it's not even damage from like words, uh, wor the world. I mean, you can be damaged from your parents, from your childhood stupid things, but that have like 
gone in through cycles when you okay. are old. I'm going to come back. We're going to come back to healing, but we're going to talk about uh, the education first. So you mentioned that you're 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 highly educated. What's your highest level of education? An MBA. And okay, you've got an MBA, right? That is impressive. Impressive. So you are, I would imagine, looking for someone who is at least as educated as yourself or more. Is that fair to say? I'm not very emphasizing on education, as I told you, more on the inner work. Just money. Just money. No, come on, stop saying this. I'm not materialistic. Not material. Well, we're all materialistic. Just some of us are more materialistic than others. Nothing, nothing wrong with admitting to this, yeah? We are all materialistic. Just some of us are more materialistic than others. We need materials to live, all right? And someone says they're not materialistic. I want to know, are you na naked living on the street? We're all materialistic to a point. This education thing, though, okay? Do you know how value works? What makes yeah. something valuable? Do you know what makes what the basic premise of making something valuable is? Do you know what that is? Well, it depends. First of all, if it's rare, it's going to be valuable. If mm -hmm. it's like very uh, difficult to make, it's valuable. This is true, but there is a, 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 an initial foundation that must be ticked first before we get to that. And that thing is, it must be desired. That thing you speak of must be desired before it can ever be considered valuable. I could have the last, I don't know, leaf on earth, okay? But if nobody cares, nobody cares. Every single day, you have a new artist creating a new painting. That's why they call them starving artists. There is only one of those paintings on the planet, and guess what? Nobody gives a flying F word. Nobody cares because nobody wants it. If nobody wants it, it has no value. Now, my question to you, Yusra, is from the men that you're dealing with, how, how much do you think they value your education? How much do you think they value your education? It's a question. They do. They do? Yes. Okay. They do, or that's what they tell you? No, trust me, because it has repercussions on other aspects of myself. I will accept it's that I a woman's education can be useful for, there is a class thing in society. A lot of families have this thing, she has to have a minimum of a degree, otherwise they won't consider her. I will accept that. It's a class thing, okay? Rarely you will hear them talking about MBAs and PhDs, but there are a lot of families, particularly ethnic families, that value degrees even amongst girls because it's like a class thing. If you want to be middle class, then you're going to have to have a degree. So I'll accept that premise. However, here's the thing, Yusra, is that the more educated you become, the more you start looking at men who are at least on your level in some way, shape or form. But here's the real problem, Yusra, is that those men need your education and what you have less and less because they are earning more and more so the more the more you add to your education or to your career or to whatever the case may be the more you are looking at men who are at least on your level the more those men on your level don't care about your money and the, your education and how much you earn from it and so on and so forth because he's doing all right. The men who care about women's money the most are men who are not earning much in the first place. Men who are earning a lot of money or good money and being highly educated is often synonymous with earning more. You might not be rich, but you definitely won't be poor, all right? If you're highly educated, you'll have a sturdy, stable job doing something or other. You'll be in the middle to upper middle class, something along those lines. If that's the case, Yusra, he will, by default, whether he admits it or not, and most men lie because most men are cowards, not require what your education brings because he's covering that those bases himself. And anyway, there is no value in what your career has to him because you want him to provide for you, as we mentioned at the beginning of this call, in the first place, you want him to take care of you. So even if he did value your education and career, like let's say he does, like I don't know about his life, but let's just say, but he's not actually getting any benefit from it because you still 
naturally want him to provide for you anyway. Yes. So then what's the point? And at this point, and this is where now you find yourself at a very critical junction, young lady, and we're having this conversation at a good time because you're still young enough to be able to cash in on your youth and beauty and so on. You're not too old, but at the same time, you're not getting any younger. You can still cash in on those things because I need you to understand the men that you are interested in don't give two hoots about your education. Most of them will lie to your face, but I'm here to tell you as an educated man myself, we don't care. Do you look nice? Are you nice to be around? Will you be nice to me? And if you're a Muslim, are you practicing? Do you pray, preferably cover and so on and so forth? After that, we're not looking for much more. The education is just like, shoot, you're shooting yourself in the foot. The higher, the more educated you become, the less options you have. Let's say tomorrow you decided to do a PhD. That's a problem. I know, you're, I, I know, you, I know you wouldn't, but I'm just saying, if you did, you are only gonna be interested in men who are either PhDs themselves or something equivalent, something similar. Maybe he's a CEO of a company or he's a manager or something. Like he has a prestigious title to his name. And those men are far, few and far between. Less than 1.4% of the British population have a PhD. That's, not in, that's including the gay men. That's including the old men. And that's including the, the, the trans men. And that's including the married men. So from the available men, it's not very many. It's very few. Yes, I I do agree a hundred percent. But what I was trying to say, this is not for me to be at this age. I came to the awareness that degrees, yes, are like keys to doors, but it's not what it is. I'm speaking in the fact that the degree has allowed me to develop my mind in other areas, for example, in relation wise. I'm not giving a headache to someone while being insecure or jealous or repeating some other patterns that are not mine, like some wounds. This work has led me to be a person that is present in the moment and be and able to uh, answer the, what you've mentioned earlier. Nice to be around, not giving headache, peace, blah, 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 everything you mentioned before. This is real work because if you compare uh, a young girl who just uh, opened the door of the world, she wouldn't know sometimes how to deal with a man properly. Okay. Her okay. Mother so, or her mother energy or something like that. But this is real work. I got you. I got you. But now I have a question for you, Yisrael. Okay? Because as I just mentioned to you, you're at a critical age, right? You're at a critical juncture in your life. And I'm sure you would like to settle down and have a family at some point in the near future. How many kids do you want to have? Maybe two. Preferably two. Two? No. But what's yeah. the point, bro? Two kids? Yes. That's, that's below replacement. No. You've got to have at least five. Two? But, but, yeah, because man doesn't get pregnant. Women do. So two is... Two is like... Two. Okay, well, you know. Two is two, bro. It's going to be a quiet house. Would be five, six, seven. How many kids do you have? I have uh, eight, alhamdulillah. Okay, fine. You wanna have, you wanna have two kids? Okay, yeah. You wanna have two children? Most men don't wanna have as many kids as I do, anyway. So you'd probably be fine with that. But you're 26 years old right now. Yeah. By the time you hit 30, which is just four years from now, when do you, when do you turn 27? What? Next month. Next month. And you're, you're 28, which is basically 30, which is basically 50. No, I'm you're 50, you're 50 years old, bro. I just... <laughs> we might as well just round it up at this point. Okay, so, so you're, you're, you're 27 years old, okay? Which is a, a critical, critical juncture. You want to have two, you want to have two children. By the time you hit 30, Yusra, okay? 90% of your eggs, fertile, fertile like that like that could be fertilized are dead you have 10 percent left by the time you hit 35 you officially enter geriatric pregnancy 
which means old people pregnancy. If a woman has not kick-started her fertile clock in her teens or 20s, the fertility, the fertility machine by having a baby, the likelihood of her falling pregnant or becoming pregnant in her 30s and beyond falls precipitously. I... So basically, you want to get married yesterday. What's the worst case scenario in your mind that you would wait to be married until you start feeling like, oh, I'm like I really need to get a move on? What's the worst case scenario? How old, what age, would, if you were still single, would you feel like, oh man, I'm under a lot of pressure now? What age would that be? Well, to be honest, I'm not, I don't have like such an age to, to say because I was, uh, if this is going to drive us to a whole other conversation oh, okay, no. of I think we should go there then, because let me tell you something, yes. okay? If age doesn't matter to you, I need, I, need to, I, need to, I need to understand something, sister, yourself, yeah? yeah? If you get past a certain age and you're not married, you become biologically useless. You're biologically, you might as well be thrown into the, in, into the bin because you can't give a man children. Now, I'm not saying that, that you are useless. I'm not saying that there is no hope for you. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying biologically, women are on a clock. You are on a shot clock. Now, I'm sure you don't want to be biologically useless, do you? Of course. No, no, of course not. You don't want to be biologically useless, yeah? <laughs> and by the way, guys, she, she speaks three or four languages. So, yeah, you just bear with her. So you want to be able to have your own children and you want to be able to do that in a healthy manner whereby your body's not at risk and so on. So if that's the case, Yusra, basically you have 12 months, maybe that, until the alarm bells need to start going off. Because once you get to that, those late 20s, 28, 29, uh, <sighs> Well, if you want start closing. Like, to, to, to consider as critical, yes, I'd say it could be critical, but it's but, not, yeah. Mm -hmm. From uh, a biological perspective. From a, from a biological perspective, yeah. But that's right. Perspective. Right. So, so this is what I'm saying to you. So, so you need to think right now. You're, you're 27 years old now, no. okay? So, not seven. <laughs> 27, <laughs> Same thing. It's basically 30. You're basically 30 at this point. If we round it up. Okay? So, with that being the case, there needs to be a sense of urgency on your part. Because I don't want you in my emails crying in a few years from now that the, the ship has sailed and that brothers are no longer knocking at your door as much as they once were because there are a younger bunch of girls who they're looking at, especially the type of man that you are interested in. You're not interested in the average Abdullah, which means that for you, you've really got your work cut out. You really need to tap out the game, Yusra, within the next six to 12 months. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. For the type of man that you want, you need to tap out the game within the next six to 12 months. After that, it's an uphill struggle because you are in competition with the younger girls, girls who are just coming into their 21, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Yeah. That's your competition. So my question to you is, what are you going to do about that? No, I'm, I'm not doing anything because, as I said, these girls are my competition. Yes, they would be if I hit the biological clock, which is the 30, which is a very late, but at this point, I'm not saying this out of, uh, like, to be arrogant, but... Mm -hmm. You're special. It's not me, but I can say that when you acquire a certain experience in life, you are... Let me tell you something. Let me tell you yeah. something, yeah? A woman's experience to a man is not a virtue. It's yeah. a vice. No, no, I'm not... We don't want experience, bruv. Yes. Say experience to a man, the first thing he thinks of is body. Yeah. But how many bodies? How many? Because any more than zero is no. too much. That's uh, the first thing he thinks. The second thing he thinks is, 
Okay, God Almighty, experience. Let me tell you a story. When I was 24 years old, okay, my dad had a conversation with my father. And he said to me, Mahdi, why don't you become a pilot? Baba, where did that come from? Like, what? How? Where did... He said, oh, well, I was just doing some browsing online and I saw an advert from British Airways and they're recruiting uh, new recruits to make them to become pilots. But the cutoff age is 25, maximum age to become a pilot. I found that, I said, oh, no, I'm not really interested. But the point here that I want you to take is there was a cutoff age. Why do you think British Airways, and it might be a universal thing amongst airliners, I don't know, but why do you think in this instance here that there was a cutoff age to become a pilot? Why do you think that? Well, the ability to learn, maybe? The ability to the... learn. The ability to learn and the, the, ability, the, the ease of which they can teach. Yes. When a man marries a woman, he wants a woman that he can lead and teach with ease. And do you know what type of women are most easily led and most easily taught? Uh, teenagers. <laughs> Young women. They are the easiest to be led and taught. Because going back to our initial example, he is the, he is the leader of the household. Yes, of course, a woman has an important role and an important input into the marriage. And we're not diminishing or taking away from the importance of her role in the marriage. However... He has the last say. He is the leader. And as a leader, you are looking for what? Followers. You're looking for a follower. And the, a woman that is most easily led is a woman who is younger. Now, are there exceptions to the rule? Of course there are. But generally speaking, younger women are more easily led because they have less experience. So here's the second gem that I'm going to give you. So never tell a man that you've got so much experience and that's why he should consider you. Because the moment you say that, it's done for you. It's finished. No, um, It's not you, a virtue. What I was trying to say, experience in life means in dynamics between men and feet and women. Go on, explain to me. Unpack that for me. That's what I mentioned earlier about how relationships work. I, I have... Which is the dynamics of... For example, the urge like to lead and why to be followed and why men feel this way and it's like a worthiness thing and it like it's a whole um it's all up. <laughs> it's, a what? A, it's a it's mixed up in a sense. That's why I wouldn't consider that like a younger woman is a competition to me. Mm. In that yes. Yes, she, but um... I'm sorry, sweethearted, she is. Whether you consider or don't consider is irrelevant. doesn't matter. What matters is what men think. Because look, this is what you need to understand. You, okay, men are looking to marry, a man is looking to marry a woman, a woman is looking to marry a man. Therefore, what a woman finds valuable or values in a man, men have to pay attention to. Because otherwise, she she is not going to make the purchase, so to speak, or marry him, right? And I'm not saying that means that we should listen to what they say with their mouths, guys. I'm not saying that. Pay attention to their actions as opposed to what they say with their mouths, as you can see from this conversation. But still, what they value is important to consider. At the, at the same time, if you're looking to attract a certain type of man, you must consider what he finds valuable. And part of what a man finds valuable, Yusra, is number one, the ability of having children, extend his progeny, especially if he's a high performing man. Unless there's something wrong with him up here, a high performing man wants to have more children that he can extend his genetic le legacy to. The legacy. Okay? Right. So, how's he going to do that with a woman who can't have kids? Obviously, he can't, which means what? Well, he's going to have a greater uh, uh, proclivity towards women who can have kids. And what type of women can have kids the easiest? Young. Younger. Women. Yes. So, so, circling back around now, yes, your competition is younger women, Yusra, whether you accept it or like it or not. I have a different point of view again. It doesn't matter what your point of view is, woman. Nobody cares. I'm telling you what the facts no. are, what the reality is. Are you with me? Look, 
what you're saying is, I'm I'm Harvard University. Just just play along with me. Oh, no. I'm Oxford. I'm I'm Harvard University. Oh. Okay, and you want to come to Harvard University, and I say to you, okay, show me your grades. Let's have a look. And you have a 2.5 GPA, and I say to you, I'm sorry, that's not enough. You can't get into Harvard. Harvard, and you say to me, I have a different perspective. I believe I should be able to go. Harvard, and I look at you like, well, what, what's wrong? We get this person out of the building, bro. This is loony. No, you have to consider what the requirements of the organization is and what they want. And in this instance here, the, in the instance, the example of the man, part of what he requires and is looking for is a woman who can have kids. And women who can have kids the easiest are younger women. So yes, it's important. Know your perspective However, doesn't matter. Man seeks status as well. Tell me more. Explain to me what you mean. Okay. Because we've been uh, on uh, a different point of view from the beginning as the leader subordinate. Like from my point of view, men seek status as well. They need a partner, someone who can be, who can understand them, who can value their work. So are you, when, are you saying that a, man, uh, a, a woman gives a man status or increases his status? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. No. You're completely wrong. And I'll explain to you why. A woman cannot increase a man's status unless she comes from, uh, you know, uh, let's say a royal family. She comes from a prestigious family line. And that's a different scenario. But let's just, I like to, to revolve a conversation around average people because the most people are average. So let's stick with average stuff, okay? She comes from an average family and him, himself as well. She cannot increase his status, but she can decrease it. A woman can decrease decrease a man's status how by behaving badly by being promiscuous and so on and i will prove to you how or why a woman cannot increase a man's status and you guys have what you might i've heard this example online before it's not mine it's not original but i will say it anyway when a king marries a woman or any woman do you know what happens to that woman yourself if a king today decided to marry you i don't know the king of some country he decides to marry you do you know what you will become what would I become? A queen. You would become a queen. A ro you would become royalty. An actual legitimate queen. But do you know what happens when a queen marries some random guy? Do you know what he becomes? He becomes the queen's random guy. That's yeah. what he becomes. There's a name for it. They call it the queen consort. The queen who just died of England, Queen Elizabeth. Her husband was never a king, even though he was royalty himself. But he was never a king. He was the queen's side king. He was the queen's, like, random dude. He was never the king. And this is because a woman cannot bestow value upon a man or his status in that way. But she sure as hell can decrease it. As we have seen with Will Smith and yeah. what his wife's been getting up to and, you know, how he's plummeted in the eyes of the people. So does that answer your question with regards to status? Partially, but status has many layers to it. I'm not speaking about uh, social status, like uh, from titles as a royalty or something, okay. but do, I'm speaking about how you generalize things. A man would want to relate with a person that's, uh, well, I'm going to be speaking on a different perspective because from my perspective, men seek status, women, like they have some... Men do seek status, but the way men seek status is, is not through a woman. It's through pursuing uh, goals, career goals, or whatever the case may be. And yes, it is true. The higher status a man becomes, all of a sudden, different types of women open up to him. He has access to different types of women, typically younger, more beautiful, and so on and so forth. But that's only because that's what men really desire. And women who are that, young, beautiful, etc., they know this. That's why you see... Never Tell me, did you ever see a 75-year-old woman on, on a billionaire's yacht? No, bro. You saw a 25-year-old woman in a bikini on a billionaire's yacht. That's just, that's just the way it goes, right? It's life. It's not fair. It is what it is. With that, with that aside... A man acquires his status through achieving things by becoming competent and other people recognizing his competency. That's how he 
acquires status, not through a woman per se. If a, uh, a, an average Abdullah marries the most beautiful woman in the world or the most highest status woman in the world, it's not going to do anything for him. He still needs to up his own status. In fact, it might even, it might even uh, uh, affect her negatively. If the most beautiful woman in the, the world married the average Abdullah, she, her status is going to come down in the eyes of her friends and other people. Which is why you tend to see like a, an equality in that regard. It's not un, it's not unusual for a high status man to marry, marry a very beautiful woman. You get the point that I'm making. So coming back to you now, without going off on too many tangents yourself. What's your plan going to be when we get off of this call for the next six to twelve months to ensure that you don't become a statistic? And what's that? Am I talking about that by 2030, 45 percent of all women your age, 25 to 45? they will be single and childless. That's nearly half of all women in the Western world. What are you gonna do when we conclude this call to ensure that that's not gonna be you? Oh, I'm gonna answer you with a question. You leave something out of perspective, which is destiny. Yeah, Qadr you're talking about, yeah? Yes. Okay, <laughs> uh, I, look, of course, I accept this. I accept Qadr, okay? but. If a man said to you, uh, Sister Yusra, uh, Qadr, inshallah, we're going to get rich. And then he sits at home and plays PlayStation all day long. She's going to be like, what, bruv? Get out of the house. Go and make the, do your action to, to, to increase the likelihood of this Qadr happening. So my question to you is, what action will you take to increase the likelihood of this Qadr happening? My actions? Mm -hmm. This is, well, first of all, I've been open to no people it's not something that will change however as i said if it's i'm gonna go back to qadr if it's meant to happen it will happen and it will click just like this without me forcing things or trying to force but i'm very stubborn and i'm gonna be stuck with I can see that. yeah Flip me, mate. i can see that but okay well listen well listen 